It's showtime. Ali, yes. can we talk about another show that you've had quite the uh, career with? Sister Act. Yes. I love this show. Me too. Good. So, where did your journey with Sister Act start? My journey with Sister Act started at the London Palladium in the original cast, um, directed by uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Anthony Van Lars. Like, seriously? Just drop that. <laughs> Just drop that. It will pick, that, pick, pick like, Whoopi up, off the floor for me. There's not <laughs> many people can put that into their I mean, their, I auditioned for that show six times. I never thought, because there was dancing involved. I'm not, I'm a mover. I'm not a, a, a dancer, I wouldn't say. But Anthony was looking for not, you know, people that can kick their legs behind their heads. He was looking for people that can, character movers. And I guess I fit into that slot. Um, and I never forget auditioning for him. And, you know, he was, he's one of the most generous choreographers I've ever met, apart from you, of course, dear. Um, <laughs> but. Thank you. You know, <laughs> you look at Anthony's CV, my goodness. Yeah. And he's also very, very um, loyal to people who work hard for him. Um, so I auditioned five times for uh, Sister Act. And I was driving, I was doing panto up at the Queen's Theatre in Hornchurch, which was an actor, musician and Cinderella. And it was coming over the Dartford Bridge. And it was obviously the Dartford Tunnel, Dartford Bridge. Uh, Christmas Eve is completely bombed. So I just get out and have a fag on them when I used to smoke, yeah. looking over the Dartford Bridge. And my phone went and it was my agent. And she said, um, happy Christmas. You've just been offered Sister Act. <gasps> I went, oh, my God. And oh I honestly God. didn't believe her because yeah. it was uh, – I'd done two West End shows before then, but I'd never done a West End show that had an orchestra. Mm. I always played the music. So I was then very – strong. 12 weeks rehearsal we had um, – Brand new musical, which is quite a long time, isn't it? It's it a rehearsal? long time, but it was being it was a a new show, yeah. And to have Alan Menken in the room oh and Whoopi Goldberg <sighs> and Anthony Van Last that's and that's Sheila Hancock, brilliant. yes, was like the little this little me from Portsmouth kept pinching myself and going, <laughs> "This is a dream, this is a dream." But everybody was just so lovely. But I will say, I mean, it was it was very it was hard work, and for me, not being a natural mover. Oh my God. I mean, doing spread the love or something like, um, Sunday morning fever. Mm. My, I just, me and my friend Walshie used to have remedial classes in the morning. We'd ask for them going, it's not in our body yet. And we're not, you know, I'm, I haven't got a choreographer, you know, choreographer's yeah. brain. I haven't got yeah. a dancer's brain, but we got there in the end. We really did get there in the end. The, t the tech for that show was eight weeks long. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, because of the, the nature of the set, it was all moving and going up and down. And, you know, um, Alan Menken wrote Spread the Love about 20 times. So I had 20 versions of my harmony of Spread the Love Isn't that... in my head. Wow. And he would know if you were doing a run of Spread the Love, because sometimes you couldn't remember which version mm. we were doing. <laughs> he would know if someone was singing a wrong note out oh of about 25 goodness. people, 25 people singing that song. You go, someone's on that, someone's on the, on the line that up, that, that was five weeks ago. He was, he's a genius, but absolutely the most nice. And his wife, him and his wife together, you just oh, want to. I love hearing that because to I the, do. He's just beautiful man. I love him. And yeah, I think he's super very generous, talented, very but, generous. And you don't have to have a voice like a, you know, like a God to work with him. You really don't. He's just, he likes people, you know, he oh. likes, he likes hardworking, talented people. And I don't know if he appreciates how magically talented he is, like his his range. Yeah, you know, I think yeah. we've talked about this before. Yeah. From Little Shop of Horrors to Little Mermaid, it's yeah. so different. Yeah, yet you can tell it's him at the mm -hmm. same time. I'm, I'm you know an Alan Menken like, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And um, when Sister Act closed, and the only reason it closed because we had bookings right through the following year. It's because Mr. Lloyd Webber wanted it back for The Wizard of Oz. And uh -huh. he owns that theatre, obviously. He owns the Palladium. 
So we closed on the Saturday and then were flown over to America on the Monday to promote the Broadway production because obviously it hadn't been mm-hmm. cast That's right, apart yeah. from Patina Miller, yeah. who was our leading lady in the West End um, and whose nickname we gave as Pat Mills. <laughs> Pat Mills. Because she wanted to learn <laughs> an East End accent. Okay. okay. All right, my darling. And <laughs> she was the worst. At the well, so absolutely right, okay. terrible. <laughs> so her East End, instead of Patina Miller, her East End name was... Pat Mills. Love it. Um, and that's all she could say. She'd go, Pat Mills. <laughs> she was terrible. Um, but again, a, a beautiful person. And look how far she's come as well oh, since what those a voice. days. So we went to um, America to promote the Broadway production in the Actors Church in Times Square. Whoopi was there, blah, blah, blah. We promoted it. And then um, we were given the afternoon off to do a bit of sightseeing. Um, Mr. Menken was there and Cos Cosarin, who's basically um, Alan's arranger mm-hmm. he's like they work hand in hand everything uh alan's written cause has been there you know um and so then we go to a party at whoopi goldberg's house <laughs> and i'm standing being shown around whoopi got Go- by whoopi wow. shown around her house which is a beautiful art deco house in new jersey um on a shelf is her grammy her two oscars her golden globes her tonys and we all had a picture of taken with Whoopi and her Tony for uh, her Oscar for Ghost, another pinch me moment. So we do the party and we all wobble out of her house, rather worse, you know, private people going around with, you know, private waiters going around and what Mm. have you. She has a a thing for gnomes. She has a back garden full of gnomes. Um, Never Google none gnome because that's what we wanted to buy her because strange things come up when you Google (laughs) a gnome. We couldn't find one. Things you learn in this part. We could not find Whoopi Goldberg a nun gnome. Um, I'm I'm intrigued not as to what comes up when you... Please don't do it. Um, (laughs) Next day, she's inviting us to um, The View, which is a programme that she does in the afternoon, a bit like Loose Women. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm sitting in Whoopi's dressing room on The View because... there was only four of us that stayed behind because I'd never been to New York and I had friends there and I went, well, I might as well stay. And every everybody, this is how long ago it was, everybody else was flying back to audition for, for Ghost and Shrek in okay, the West End. So yeah. that's how long ago yeah. it was. Um, so uh, four of us are sitting in Whoopi's dressing room at The View and she goes, oh, you're a drummer, aren't you? And I went, oh, yeah. I'm a, I used to go and have a sneaky fag with Whoopi at the Palladium on the roof in the interval. Brilliant. Um, and she said, here you go. Here's a pair of drumsticks. Phil Collins gave them to me. And they were signed. I've still got those. Of course I have. What? And I just thought, this is just getting madder Crazy and nine. madder. Crazy. So we did the view. Um, then, of course, a couple of days later, we fly back. I go back to, to London. I was living in Hastings at the time. And uh, next thing we did uh, it was I was cooking in... Um, because as an actor, you should always have a second string to your bow because you're not going to be acting all the time. Okay. So I trained to be a chef. So I flew home on the Sunday after spending all that time with Alan Menken and Whoopi Goldberg (laughs) and was cooking egg and chips on the Tuesday in a little care home in Eastbourne. See? And I think if I'd have told them that I was in Whoopi Goldberg's house this time last week, they'd have actually sectioned me or not believed me. That's why you're still so humble. I can go from one thing to, you know. You've got to pay the rent. You've got to pay the rent. A girl has got to have a, you know, a couple of glasses of wine. It's right? Aye. And I will always say that to, to, to my, if I teach and, you know, I taught uh, a workshop for NI Opera and I was saying to these people, who wants to be an actor? And, you know, about nearly all of them put their, their arms up. What would you like to do? I want to be in the West End. I want to be on the telly. I want to be in films. And I go, it's good to have those right. aspirations, but. <laughs> but okay, here's the reality. And I yeah. think I took a few down off the cloud. It's needed though, Ali, because I, said, I don't get think. get another job. Don't just rely yeah. on being an actor. You're I don't not, think enough work. people. Do you give it, give that realism now? And I think as a generation, the younger generation now, it, there's so much they just expect will happen. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? There, there's an air of entitlement to it I think that's the to thing to now. do with things like, you know, the X Factor and, mm. and um, not necessarily Britain's Got Talent, but all those, those sort of yeah. uh, talent shows. Yeah. Yeah, that were there, and suddenly that person that won the X Factor was catapulted. They've done a good thing where they've made it accessible, and people who wouldn't normally think that they could do, they've made it achievable. Yeah, but in the same breath, they have made it maybe too accessible. Where you know anyone thinks, oh, five minutes work, and yeah. I've made it. But actually, what they don't realise is a lot of the people who are successful on those shows 
have been doing that since they were really four hard years old. That's it. And they're doing yeah. it every week and they're working really hard at it. And most of them, in fact, probably a lot of them are semi-professional already. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Love the catchy tunes and insightful discussions on musical lyrical lingo? Why would you not? Now you can reap your fandom. Ooh! Good fans and show off your love of all things musical theatre with our exclusive merchandise. Ooh. From comfy tees, t shirts, mugs to stylish tote bags, we have something for every fan. Our designs are inspired by the show's iconic things because we are so iconic and featured playful quotes, alpha, ba, and graphics that will have you humming along. I will never work again <laughs> wherever you go. <laughs> So head over to our merch store now and start shopping. Spend your money, people. And don't forget to share your pics on our social media using hashtag podcast musical lyrical lingo merch. We love to see our fans rocking our gear. Yes, we do. Happy shopping. No. But you look at, you know, I was listening to Natalie Cassidy's podcast, um, who's Sonia in East Enders, yeah. and she was talking to the lovely lady that's in Gavin and Stacey. Sorry, I can't remember her name. And she was saying that the, the lady in Gavin and Stacey, the amount of self-tape she's had to do, and Natalie Cassidy was saying, but I've never had to do a self-tape because I've done the same she, she character yeah, that's for it. 20 years. Yeah. She said, I wouldn't know where to start, where to do a self-tape. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's how it works as well sometimes. Yeah. Like how many self-tapes have you done over the past month? Probably about 20. And I know all about it because I have to do the reading. <laughs> I've played about 30 different characters. And do you know what I have to say to me? I've said, Jen, can stop you just, just can you stop acting because this is not about you? They want to look at me. I get really, I get really into it. They're not it, looking like... at you for you at the job, but they're looking at me for the job. That's okay. amazing. That's amazing. Uh, can I ask great. you a question as a mum of a daughter who would love to go into the industry and doesn't believe... We we came from stage school, which you guys know about, yeah. where you're only told you're good if you are good, especially whenever we went there. You were, you know, we weren't given expectations of saying, oh, you were really bad at that if you were a bit rubbish. So she <laughs> struggles whenever, particularly me and Timothy said, oh, that was really good. Or mm. if we say that was bad, she, she will take that on. But she never believes that she's good. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how is she going to go into an industry where you have to have a really thick skin and believe that you've got the talent. So, like, do you... And what I'm trying to say is, do you think that it's important to make sure we use those choice of words appropriately with young people within the industry and only praise them if there is the talent there? Um, no, I think any praise is good. Okay. Um, I, even now, after 40 years, like I filmed a malpractice the other day, thought I was absolutely shocking because I couldn't, I couldn't remember certain words... I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you have a go at this. I think the day that you go, yeah, I'm pretty bloody good at that, is the day you stop yeah. mm. because you're going to trip yourself up. You're going to get caught out. Yeah. And I think a lot of of how to become successful is preparation. Mm. Preparation for an audition, preparation for rehearsals. You're never finished with a show. That show will always either be in the back of like once or sister act or always in my bones Mm -hmm. because every day you thought about it or you had to learn something new or a cover goes on and you have to adapt to how they're doing. So I would say, yes, praise, praise children all the time. Um, because at some stage they're going to think, now this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't for me. Let them enjoy it while they can. Yeah. And, and I think the more confident they get, the better, the better you are, you know, I think, well, sorry, I, I'm not very good at, like, communicating what it is I'm saying. I think sometimes we fall down or we have seen people go, you're so wonderful at that, and then they're just... Yeah, it's like fault, and then it's, it's fault. false. It's, it's true. blowing oh, the hot smoke up their backside, and, and then it they, doesn't... Yeah. Then they go away, and they're like, oh, my goodness, I'm not... Because especially yeah. in Northern Ireland, we're very small, and everybody it's knows everything. Have you heard of the poo sandwich? The poo sandwich. Okay. Uh, S-H-I-T sandwich, really. Yeah. Which is, you give... Um, a bad, good, good, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other way around, yeah. Other good, way around. <laughs> good, but. But. And then another good. And then another good. Okay, yeah. So that so let's say that that coffee was really lovely, but it could have been done with a little bit of more milk. Um, but apart from that, I really loved it. See yeah. the. Um, <laughs> Hope you I, take those I, notes I on board. Notes, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that most artists, and and I, by that I'm just covering a broad spectrum of people, mm-hmm. 
creatives and actors and dancers and all the rest, they constantly question yeah. their ability. And if they're not, as Ali says, question. So even from a very young age, yeah. from that child mm-hmm. that you were and are yeah. right through, you will never think you're good enough. Um, it could be considered humility, but also I think all the praise to go along with it um, builds the confidence and it will be going in somewhere. Yeah. And like, yeah. if she keeps going yeah, and she's determined to keep going, no matter what anyone will say, she will keep going Yeah, and she'll just get into the business in one way or the other. Yeah. If she doesn't, it'll be because she doesn't have the desire within her to do yeah. it. It has to come. Like if any student ever says to me, do you think I should be a dancer? I say, no. Yeah, and they, they say they're why, they're and you're like, because you've had to ask me. <laughs> yeah. If you, you you come up and say I'm going to do this, so how you know how can I be yeah. better? Yeah. Then that you can work with that. Yeah. You can't work with should I? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. Because it just it it is a vo- I 100 percent believe it's a vocation. Yeah. Like for example, my brother who's a nurse, or Teachers. Timmy who's a teacher. Yeah. Do you know, Ali who's an actor. Everybody, you if you feel the passion, you feel it from a very young age, and the drive. Like if you're sitting in school, for example, the school that I went to, oh, isn't that lovely? She can sing and she can dance and she can do all that sort of stuff. But when it comes down to it, get yeah. on with your work. Yeah, you're never going to make. You know, that's not going to be a career. And then I tar- chirp up and go, actually, do you know what I am? Yeah. And then you just keep going. And I think if a child or a young person feels that, they'll do it. Yeah, they'll just do it. And I suppose it's hard as well trying to make sure that there's that backup plan. Like we we spoke about it before, whenever we went to, in careers in school, you know, Tiffany was like, I want to be in musical theatre. And they're like, that's not a real job. Or I was like, I want to be an actor. But what's your backup plan? Could you not be a teacher? And and you felt really disheartened. But it, but it's also reality. You need to pay bills. So you need to have some form of backup plan. So it's really hard. But to that was of... also the fault of career teachers as well in schools. They Why haven't a teachers? clue. <sighs> they, like that idea of teacher of careers or a teacher that is um, giving young people yeah. information up, 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 around careers, that should be abolished within schools mm. because they don't have a broad enough spectrum of what careers are out there or what what is the definition of a career, what jobs a career and what's, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all very, very muddy. And I think the number of dodgy steers from career teachers over the years is wild. Yeah. And if you're a young person who's impressionable, like I wasn't really, I was going to just ply on and do my own thing. But yeah. I think a lot of people would have just went, oh, right, okay, yeah, no, maybe I shouldn't do that because it's not very secure and I'll not have a car and I'll not have a... Mm-hmm. Well, I definitely think my career teacher planted that seed in my head. With, well, he, re- you know, with because re- I did, I was interested in, in perf- performing as a career. I also was interested in teaching. Like, I could see myself doing both, but I, I do believe... Part of the reason why I only did my first two or three editions mm-hmm. out of the eight that I'd lined up for various different schools was because I was going, oh, but this is really hard. There was a and, yeah. and what happens if I don't get a job? How am I paying my rent? You know, and that un- unsureness which I think was partly planted because that's exactly what my career teacher had said mm-hmm. was part of the reason why I went, you know what, actually... Maybe not. You didn't take Let's the Let's go on down. It. Yeah. I also don't think I had enough belief. You know, I was the person going, what do you think? Should I? Yeah. So it was right that I didn't go down that direction. Because, you know. Yeah, because when you get further down the line and you're not getting the jobs for yeah. six months at a time, that's the killer. Yeah. Well, and I will say it's a lot harder it. now than it was in mm. my time. When I, in my 20s, um, which would have been the 80s and 90s, um, it was a lot easier. Yeah. But now, if I if I was in my twenties now, there's no way I'd 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 be going down another path. It's too, um, well, it's too much competition. It's hard to say that for sure, but I know what you mean. The competition, yeah, the competition, and the ambition, yeah, is is, you know, through the roof. Yeah, is that because the there's more access to? better training and more people are able to I avail of so. the training well I, so. I remember when in stage school people got to go off to drama school or uh, musical theater school and we were like wow now you're hearing of more, more young people. kids 
oh, they've got off. It's actually just kind of oh, right, expected now rather than this is a major achievement. That's yeah. a whole so, other podcast there. But okay. I think what's happened is, you know, the education system has changed and a lot of those colleges now are affiliated, for example, with the university. Mm. And so actually, look, this is very controversial, but, you know, whenever you go to a dance college mm-hmm. and there's only 20 people in the group because they've been auditioned and into their lives and they're the creme to the creme of the talent that's going in, well, then they're going to get the jobs because yeah. there's an intensity there. Yeah. But if you have 100 people because they're all paying fees yeah. and it's all about the money then but, how many of them are going to get jobs? Yeah. yeah. And they might not necessarily all be as talented as they should be or as fully trained. Look, it's, it's, a, it's a big topic. It dilutes it a bit, doesn't it? It dilutes yeah. it, yeah. We've had this conversation, um, even my husband and I have had this conversation as well, about degrees are like not what they used to be years ago. Yeah. You know, you can get a degree in anything. So actually now, whenever you're just wanting to go and get a normal job, um, you kind of have to have a master's or even a PhD in some instances, you know, you have to have a couple of right. degrees. Like am I, I have a degree in drama. I have a, an HND in formal arts, but I have a master's in business completely different. But that's because I've, I felt I've had to constantly retrain, yeah. you know, in order to get the jobs that I want to get. But it's it's too accessible. I, it was easy for me to get an HND and do a degree and do a master's. While it, it's, you know, the same in any industry, there, you know, there, there's too much, there, there's too many people are accessing them, which means then the job yes. pool is yeah. bigger. Is yeah. bigger. And there's, yeah. yeah, there's not enough jobs. Dilated again. Yeah. 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 Everything yeah. is dilated. I mean, for, for example, to me, for Beauty and the Beast film, yeah. for featured ensemble, um, for 20 parts featured ensemble, over two and a half thousand people auditioned. It's insane. With your experience in something similar, like... Yeah, well, I've... Yeah, yeah. You know, the amount of people that you've had to audition in the last... Yeah, I'm, I've weeks. currently just completed uh, auditions for Les Mis. Yeah. And nearly 500 people. Yeah. You know, auditions for us. Sure. Yeah. Well, in my time, and that's just Northern yeah. Ireland, yeah. In my time, you know, you go for an audition, you have to, have to do your, your modern speech, your comedy speech, mm. and your Shakespeare speech... Um, and there were maybe for the role you were going up for, there were maybe six actresses going yeah. through that door, but you met face to face. And what's happened now with the evolution of self tapes is that it knocks out the first round. People go, yes, we'll recall her, 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 which brings it down again. Yeah. And then if you're lucky, you get called in, but a lot of it, and this is to do with the COVID years is, is self tapes now. Yeah. And it, they, they won't even watch it all the way through. And I've got this from, from a casting director's mouth. You'll pop up on the screen. They go, nope, they won't even see the oh, tape. And how long yeah. does it take us to do tapes sometimes? Gosh, it takes hours. 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 <laughs> um, so yeah. it's completely it's changed. It is. Completely changed. Can I for a minute go back? Just a sister act because mm-hmm. you then did revisit sister act, didn't you? I did, years I did later, the, um, I did the West End, um, and then it was the tour, the UK, yes. UK and Ireland tour. Yeah, and Cynthia Revo was our Dolores. Okay, can you imagine? Yeah. Um, this was probably Cynthia's first job. Uh-huh. Out. She went to RADA, the RADA. Um, and then the third one was Alexandra Burke. And then the third one was Alexandra Burke. So I had some beautiful Doloreses. And you, the first UK tour that you're talking about there, was that was a replica, was it, of yes, the Palladium? Yes, it was a combination of the Palladium and the Broadway production. Okay. And then your second UK tour with Alexandra Burke, that was a completely was non-replica. musician. Yeah, so that was another actor. So that was, did my head in, having to play the saxophone yeah. to raise your voice and... And take me to heaven. That was. And what uh, was? Yeah, what was it like? Because obviously amazing. you knew the show when you had your version yeah. of it already in your muscle memory. Craig and Revel your Hall head. was the choreographer. Yeah. Um, the UK tour was 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 um, Anthony again. So okay. it was the same choreography. Yeah. Great. Bing. Phew. Don't have to learn it. Phew. <laughs> yeah. But trying to learn new choreography by Craig, who's completely different to yeah. Anthony, with a saxophone or a banjolele up my arm or round my neck was a complete <laughs> and also as as the productions have gone on the nuns have got fewer okay so yes. you, was there like 10 of you uh, in the in the palladium there were 25 yes. nuns 
on the first UK tour, there were 15. Yeah. And then on the Anti Musician show, there was nine. Yes. Because that's what I remember about that yeah. actor Muso um, tour. There were so few mm-hmm. nuns. I was like, my God, they're having to work hard. Yes, like they're having did. a really for you know hardness what? one. I remember the, the Acting Musician version because I'm so proud of it. Yeah. The orchestra, we did have uh, the boys behind playing the drums, piano, bass. Yeah. As a basic, you know, foundation. Uh-huh. And then all, we played the rest of it. The music on the Acting Musician t- tour sounded just as good as a 30 piece orchestra in the Palladium. A thousand percent. And I remember and watching I just you. Thought, wow. And one minute you're doing a ooh, ah, and then like. Two seconds later, you get the saxophone, you're like, and then you go back to singing another line. I'm like, hi, hi, is she, how is her brain the doing that? Of that? I was frightened for my front teeth, I'll tell you that much. My God. Like skill of, and can Sarah? I say, my favourite Dolores, and this is going to be controversial Ooh. too, Alexandra Burke, without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And she's back now doing it. Yeah, I saw that Dominion. actually West End Live. I saw the video and it's like, yeah. oh, she's done it again. Cynthia won't like that, but tough. You know? Yeah. She's, you know. She's, 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 she's busy. She's, she's busy. what's she, an Oscar away from an EGOT? How yeah. about that? Mm-hmm. Wow. We'll see what Wicked brings. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. Could, it could, could happen, could happen. Like could happen like you yeah know. well i agree i thought alexandra burke was yeah incredible and something very all the dolores is mm-hmm. stunning it feels like that's her part doesn't yeah, it yeah, there's absolutely. certain people that just they get a part that's yeah. them you know richard Sparrow and joseph it's just like yeah. that was his yeah. role but um and can yeah. i say all three of them are absolutely beautiful people oh. there's not one ounce of grandness or stardom about them that's what you want, you isn't know? it? And though? as much as like Patina's won a Tony and look what Cynthia's got and look what Alexandra's mm. got, they're just That seems people. to be a lucky role, doesn't it? It is a lucky yeah. role. I've had very luck- lovely. So I think my nun days are over, Timmy. Really. You're done. So You're hanging up your I'm habit. the longest running nun. I've done over a thousand performances of Sister Act. Yeah, I think you can in hang one your way habit up other. and be yeah. happy with... Well, they did ask me to, uh, to audition for Sister, uh, for Sister Mary Lazarus <gasps> for the for the tour again. Oh, but you would make a really good I know, Mary but Lazarus. you know, can can we save that in the pension <laughs> pot? <laughs> pension pot for when I really am seventy and ancient. We'll save it for then when yeah. I need the, the re, need the job. And I'm sort would of, you have to do the Mary Lazarus while playing the maracas or something? Or <laughs> 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 Who knows? <laughs> you know. Do you like touring life? I did, but not now. I'm older. Okay. Got you. Um, it's, you know, you have to be so prepared for that. Mm. I have a, like a touring food kit in my boots, like tomato sauce, brown sauce, herbs, <laughs> spices, blah, blah, blah. Cause you don't want to be buying them every time you go somewhere new yeah. because you know, you, and also trying to find digs on tour is in America, of course, it's all provided for you. You yeah. don't have to yeah, worry about that. You don't have to worry about like, that. Whereas here you get an allowance, which has gone up thanks to equity. Thank goodness. Because, um, you know, you don't know what you're walking into half the time. And thankfully now Equity have started this um, investigation on people will tell them whether the digs are good or bad through a forum on the Equity website. And if they're bad, they will go and investigate and they will be struck off. Yeah, it's brilliant. Because you know? uh, there, there was a period a, a year or two ago where, you know, I follow a few you know, actors or musical theatre folk who are doing various different tours. Yeah. And they they got very vocal with, you know, their stories or videos of where they had landed that it's week. shocking places. And absolutely shocking. I was like, that is horrendous. Like, for somebody who's never done it, the idea of being in a touring company seems really difficult. Like, it's just constantly on the move well, and having to you, set you, the you show into you, somewhere new. And You finish on a Saturday you, night, you know, um, you're in a strange place. I always try and get, um, you know, self-catering and also your own place. Yeah. Um, because you've got to remember, you're away from home and it doesn't matter how much it costs. I mean, you do get an allowance. And unfortunately, the rental prices on the road mm. reflect that allowance because people aren't stupid. They know what you get paid, the landlords. So they're going to put it up. Yeah. Um, but you're away from home. And my other tip would be take your own pillow mm. and uh, a nice blanket to put over the bed and your, and your touring kit in your boot of yeah. all your yeah, condiments. It's not glamorous, is it's it? It's not glamorous. No. You finish on a Saturday you night. Want. You try either travel to your next venue on a Saturday night or Sunday on your day off. Day off, yeah. And then you have to be at the venue, wherever it may be, Aberdeen, at two o'clock for a sound check and a, and a walk through the set. Yeah. I mean, I have had um, one colleague who we were in Aberdeen and he was in Southampton thinking that was the next venue. <laughs> oh, dear. 
Whoops. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> you just about made it in time. Oh, my but where, goodness. But where else? Like, what other industry or job where they send you on a work trip and you've got to source your own accommodation? I know. No other. Like, that is, I know. that's crazy. And uh, speaking to Francis, um, when we had him on, you know, just the fact, like, trying to find somewhere. And he, he said he was a little bit older, had done tours before, so he was sort of educating the younger people within uh, the company. But, I mean, that doesn't seem right. That, it's not glamorous, for sure. Well, it's certainly yeah. not glamorous, uh-uh. but it just feels like you're your way doing this unconventional job anyway and you're going to be by yourself and here you need to find somewhere but it needs to be close enough to the theatre so yeah. that you aren't wrecked by and the time s- sort your own travel out as well and then you've got charlatans who you know their yeah. properties are, are I mean I've, I've been, like thankfully fair. in yeah. my time of touring I've only had two places that I've walked in and walked out again yeah due to mould and damp yeah. and you yeah. look at the bed and you go nah nah I am not sleeping in that no nah. well let's bring it a little closer to home then so, uh, one of the the productions that you were both working together again mm-hmm. most recently in my memory was Into the Woods in the lyric in Belfast, and I know that was a particularly special mm-hmm. production for you, Ali, because yeah. you got to play the witch, the witch, and you have Which wanted is to play it my for favorite a favorite mi- Sondheim musical, apart from Sweeney Todd, I would say. That's another one I've yet to do, but who knows? Uh, but yes, uh, Into the Woods was yeah. um, a huge honour to play for Cameron Menzies and NI Opera. And it was unbelievable. Oh. What was it like? Because that I would say The Witch is probably one of the hardest musical theatre roles uh, to learn and prepare for. Frightening. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Jen helped me learn the rap well well before rehearsal we both still knew it we both still know it i was about to say do you because i I was like i really want to ask her to do do you still remember it but i didn't want to then put you on the spot we went on for weeks and weeks and weeks like we would take the dog for a walk on the beach and we would be doing four lines a day and nothing but greens parsley pepper you know and this would just go on and on and like we just like test each other every now and again and just launch in with a line asparagus (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's one word asparagus and fiddle ferns and no, lettuce watercress watercress and fiddle ferns and lettuce go on Ali do it uh, greens greens and nothing but greens parsley peppers cabbages and celery asparagus and watercress and fiddle ferns and lettuce he said all right, right. but it wasn't quite because I caught him in the autumn in my garden one night he was robbing me raping me, me rooting through my rutabaga raiding my arugula and ripping up the rampy and my champion, champion my favourite <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I so uh, before we started today, I was like, "Well, will she do the rap? Will she That's do the rap?" The but then you don't want to put pressure on someone. No, you going, do remember it, and yeah. I so I learnt the rap and last midnight before rehearsal because I thought I've got to give yeah. myself a fighting chance. <laughs> yes, you know. Um, <laughs> and you were glorious. Oh, thank you. As was the choreography. What was oh. it like? Cho- do you want to putting... tell them about my faux pas on the choreography? Oh my gosh! So. The main thing about that whole show is that everything's repeated, but not quite the same every single yes. time. So, oh like, you're God, hearing similar, oh. you're hearing, you know, into the woods, da, 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 but every time it's into the up woods, the, lane the and next down the road and different. up the road and round the corner. And, <laughs> God, help me. So, what do I do? I make the choreography exactly the same way as the music is. So, it's so sort of the same, but it's not the same every single time. So, I, it's like. I helpful, Ali, eh? Not, not at all. But. I don't know. I, there's some shows that as soon as you hear the mu- as soon as I hear the music, it that's it. The the style of the choreography, the movement, it just comes straight into my head, and there's absolutely no turning me, and that's just the way it is. So mm-hmm. I choreographed something for the audition, and that was what we did for the whole show. Like that was the style that we went with for the whole show. It just popped in, but there was this bit. Um, it must have been the finale. It might have been the finale of. Of Act One, but I can't remember. Anyway, no, every it was the end of the show, was it the actual actual end of the show. So yeah. Ali's in the middle, right? And there's a if you, you can imagine her, she's front and center, and then everybody's on stage right, and everyone else is on stage left, and it's everything's symmetrical, and we're like we're going the wolf, the giant, the, but everyone at one point turns and beckons, like opens their arm towards Ali, who's the witch in the middle, because we say the witch. The witch. And everyone on stage right went with their left arm towards the center and everyone on stage left went with their right arm towards stage center and everyone's focusing on center and there's no witch. 
because where is the witch? What were you doing? I she toppled off of us earlier. She <laughs> went yeah. down stage right. So she was on stage right, in practically in the wing. And I was like, where the hell is the witch? Doing a little do do with holding my skirt up and showing she off me black was pop marching. Socks. She 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 realised when she got, got there she was early. in the wrong place and she just started early. dancing in the corner. <laughs> la, la. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna kill her. I'm actually gonna you know, kill her. <laughs> but I knew I'd done it, and I caught hold of Jolene O'Hara's face, and she just could not look at me because she was looking. Oh, she's gone. Ta-da! She's you know, gone. Like, it's like that moment in the Sound of Music, you know, when they swing the spotlight round, yeah, and the family don't appear. Yeah. That's that's that. That's what that was. Oops. And are you quite good at leaving things? So that was obviously very clearly a note. Okay. Camera just laughed again. at me. Yeah, and uh, it was no. The, did I'm, you keep the note for the theater, or do you take things like oh, that no, there home? Was no, no, it was like Ali. What the hell were you doing? Yeah, <laughs> I said I don't know. To be frank, do you know she's, <laughs> no, she's never lived it down? <laughs> never lived it down like, as many times. People as we still can remember get, it. Yeah, we slide the off. witch. Where is she? Where is she? Oh, where's she's in the witch? corner, dosy doing. It's like where's Wally? Spot the witch. Where's the witch? Especially in that glorious set, you, yeah. you could have been anywhere. Like it wasn't as if we hadn't done it a hundred. Like we had done it a hundred. I just times. wandered off. I think I was thinking, what? what no, but I tell think? them what you you de- This is what she decided to do as well because the end, the words are all very very complicated mm. towards mm. the end, aren't they? Well, her and uh, someone else who will remain nameless, but who also played the narrator, Sean decided Cairns. that they would turn <laughs> and face upstage. So during that particular, could never get them right, Timmy. Because oh, because she didn't know right. the words. Oh, you're naughty. The t- the pair of you. We, no, we I, just couldn't get them in. We'd, and my head was, was saturated. Absolutely. My head was saturated. She had a lot to learn, to be fair. And yes. so there, was, there are some moments where I am doing a job like that, where I just go, do you know what? Just leave them be. Let it go. Yeah. Just there, let it go. Sometimes like, there's the, battles, yeah, there's the, battles. the okay. fight that's you know? too big of a fight to... Yeah. Love the but but sure, funny. haven't we all been there, Lauren? We've all been we just yeah. made, We've realised in this podcast, in the various shows that we've been involved in in the past, we just made up the words for most of them, really. Yeah, I know. And that's okay. Nobody ever caught... Cause and there was on, also, so. it's funny, isn't it, how certain words evade you. I had to write the last four lines of careful the things you say, children will listen. That set was covered in lyrics, by the way. No, it wasn't covered. There were four <laughs> lines on the back of the tube that was like a, the branch of a tree because they would not go in. And, of course, the more that you think about it, the worse it gets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I it. just had them there so I could go, yep, yeah, that's that bit. Yeah, it's that bit. One well, keeping my eye on the conductor. Did you have a favourite? I'm of a certain age, Timmy. Sometimes you need all the help you can get. Fair you know? enough. You know? Did you have a favourite moment of that show? Like, was there... Because the witch goes on such a journey through that, you yeah. know, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Like, was there a part of that show that you were like, this is the bit I love the most? I, I, I mean, it's the darkest bit, but it's when Rapunzel gets squished. Mm. And then there's a refrain yeah. after that. And then she has the row with the baker's wife saying, you don't understand. Mm. And that was my favourite. Yeah. I think dramatic moment. And also the end of Last Midnight. Yeah. I well, it's a pivotal moment for the witch because you actually do feel her pain. Even yeah. She's, she's being this ridiculous mother, you know, mm. this you know horrible mother, but actually kept her she tower. still loved her in her. She believed yeah. and felt that she loved her in her own way. Yeah. And she was and right in the end, it. you know. Yeah. She was right. That prince kept, you know, mm. don't oh, yeah, mix she just with people. Told it as it was, like, yeah. and that, that's, you know, she yeah, that wasn't was a bad amazing. person, really. And what do you think of um, the fact that people say that Sondheim is a modern day Shakespeare, especially with Into the Woods? That's some deep question there. Laura, Lauren loves the deep questions. I, I would say most certainly. I mean, you listen to his lyrics. I mean, sometimes I don't think he likes actors very much with the complication, mm. that he, especially something like Company and, you know, what's mm. the one about getting off the train and, and I'm never going to marry and I'm not going to oh, marry yeah. You go, yeah. how on earth do you remember all that? It's I just... don't think there's an easy song time to learn, is there? No. They're all and it's very... like he, you know, I remember watching that documentary about him and the way that he chooses words and his thesaurus and, you know, and he, he's, he's just brilliant. He's yeah. just brilliant. It's a bit like, you know, the way he's a different brilliance to Alan Menken and Alan Menken and, and Sondheim are a different brilliance to Bernstein. You know, it's, yeah. they're all, they're all just up there in their own right, really. Yeah. You know, I love, I love the line in End of the Woods and I've spoken about it before, but I think just as a, as a mom being able to like help explain to kids about the world where Red says, um, nice is different from good and explaining to, to my kids that, it's just because somebody's nice to you doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they're good, good to you or so good true. for you. Yeah. And I, I love that it comes from a musical. Yeah. Um, He's a genius. Yeah, that is. Awesome. But, you know, I, I think 
red is a is a brilliant part to look at, especially for a little girl to kind of be aware of dangers whenever yes. you are out and people are trying to maybe entice you to do something. And, you know, it can happen to boys too, but I just um as a as a bit of a protective mother, but yeah, mm. I love I love Into the Woods and the stories and the meanings and the, the themes and all in that. But yeah. And the way that Red changes her like she's naive at the beginning yeah. and then she just sort of oh right okay. Yeah. And yeah, I I love that character. And she, she doesn't well. regret the experience she had because it's now made her who she is. Yeah. But she also is like, what would I be like if I didn't have that experience? Yeah. You know, that experience, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. you could sit and like, you know, highlight and what does this mean? Like you do with the Shakespeare text, yeah. you know, and you could do that with any song time. I saw the original yeah. Into the Woods in the West End and it closed and then it won an Olivier. Hmm. You know, that's, it's things that I could never get my head around that. Like a show, it was brilliant. Mm. You know, it was, uh, it was just, and I just thought this is so clever. A bit like City of Angels. Yes. That I like, and then yes. it won an Olivier. Yeah, just, I like City of Angels. Yeah, I loved City of Angels. Lovely yeah. Hayden Gwynn, God rest her soul, was in that. Oh. Playing um, Mrs., you know, that. And yes, matter of I fact, can't if you got that song, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. Of course, Into the Woods also had you globetrotting again. Yeah. Didn't it, did Jen? It. Yeah, I went to Perth to West Australian Opera. Yeah, and it's that been was nominated really for. Weird. Well, I was about to say yes. this. This production is has been a critical, roaring success. You've had lots of nominations. Yeah, well, it won best show uh, in the Irish Times Awards. Best production for best production. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And I think that's the first time a Northern Irish production has won. Yeah. I think you're right. Wow. So yeah, that was lovely. Really nice and so fantastic to bring it to Australia but really weird because whenever they came out in their costumes and mm-hmm. I have this with Harry Potter as well when <laughs> the new cast come out in their costumes yes they're obviously the same costumes and their style you know the, the style is the yep. same it's weird I saw it I went new faces. yeah they've got different faces but like just slightly different faces okay. because they're made up as well it's, it's, it's it very strange and Ali of course then had to sit and watch Maria Mercedes who's a huge star in yeah. Australia she's gorgeous and, and yeah. she's Maria. lovely but um, there was no they're like playing the same part but so different but well. this is the thing yeah, yeah. I'm sure that rubs a bit whether dress, it's a good or a bad yeah. do you know like yeah. oh this is uh, do you know weird because like but my particular way of choreographing, as I mentioned before, is to try and get the movement out of people. Yes. So I then, of course, had choreographed it on the Belfast cast, mm-hmm. on their bodies. Yeah. And so then whenever we went to Australia, that's the first time I've ever put my movement from yeah. the original cast onto a new cast. And so that was a new experience and, for me and unusual for them, I think. And did you have to tweak a bit or did it Actually, it I'd, I'd, fit I'd in. used the opportunity to do, make changes that I wanted to have done and, and I ran out Got of you. time in Belfast. Nice. So I wouldn't say that I, yeah, I made a few like little changes for yeah. people who just couldn't, who weren't quite marrying uh-huh. themselves with mm-hmm. this stuff. But in general, like the big ensemble pieces, I actually had a bit of fun with and changed a few things just for the crop, you know, to make yeah. them better. I, How I liberating made, though, made especially if it was something that you had wanted and je- like, I did, I felt like I just a got nice a wee, another chance. You know, they yeah. put that on in four weeks. We put it on in four weeks to learn a yeah, song really time. Tight. As Honest, as that. Honestly, it was really, really tight. I it was, was gobsmacked when I saw it. I really was. Um, it was just it was absolutely pressure. brilliant. It was and I think it. shows like Into the Woods can be, they're so easy to like scale down as well yeah, yeah but also to go really wrong with yeah, oh yeah. do you know what i mean like it but it was just it was just brilliant and did the australian cast deal with all those steps as well as the belfast cast did because there was a lot of steps ali right there was <laughs> you're uh-huh. saying nothing no comment moving on quickly <laughs> what I will say, what I will say is that um, I, I sometimes store manage for NI Opera, so I was in charge of all the costumes coming back from Perth, okay, and unpacking them and putting them back on the rails and store yeah. them. Um, when it came to my costumes and it had Maria Mercedes' name in the back, they were soon out. <laughs> you were Maria knows this. Maria knows this. I went, no. Nope, Did you put your my... name back in? No, I just took them out. Like, no, that's my costume, Maria. You're, Sorry. We love you, Maria, but dress. don't be saying. Yes. Dress Beautiful. Handmade. One, one, oh, gorgeous. One in a million. Gorgeous. The costumes Beautiful. were stunning. It was. Yeah, well. The whole thing was just stunning. Now, Thank you. you mentioned it. Well, Let's well. talk about Harry Potter. Let's bring it right up to present day present time. Day. So, 
What is your involvement with the cursed, cur- the cursed, the cursed child? Get it right. I know I'm so bad. I was resident for eighteen months. Okay. And then now I'm the associate. Yeah. So I've gone from being having to be there all the time. So the resident sees the show twice a week. So mm-hmm. two days a week, so you see four shows. Um, and then this year I did some casting. So I did the audition. With regards to the rehearsal process for something like Harry Potter. Yes. How long do you have? We do eight weeks because we're doing four acts. So we're doing two shows yeah. and we do uh, act one in a week and a half. We do act two in a week, act three in a week, act four in a week. And then we do tech for a week. So we, How yeah. on earth do they learn all those acts? It's and you've only a week. To learn a, each. It's a lot. It's a lot of work, honestly. And the, so, so say for some uh, example, someone like a swing who has maybe five roles to learn. Yeah. Um, they would prioritize like one particular role or maybe two roles. And then when it comes to the show being open, they then continue to tech for another six weeks. Okay. So we'll actually be teching yeah. all the way through to December. So they'll be teching the show when the show's not on. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like it's on Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then it's dark on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that's whenever we continue to tech all the covers and swings. So it's a long, long game. It is. And it, it's harder work than a surely other shows out there, right? You have that's, a lot of things to remember as well, don't you? You have yeah. all those. Well, I have to try to and learn the whole show. Yeah. Yeah, you do. yeah. There's 73 scene changes. I think. It's different. It's just a different type of show. Like, mm-hmm. So p- people who have a movement brain will mm-hmm. do really well in it because, yeah. you know, that movement memory of, okay, I run off here. I've got this suitcase. I put it down. I go back up to the top wing. I grab this, yes. the stairs. I push them in. I turn around. Then I go off and get my... Do you know, if you've got that kind of brain that understands and uses your body to remember stuff, yeah. I think you'll do... A, people who have that skill do yeah. really, really well. Um but yeah, I wouldn't say it's more difficult, but it's just a particular style. Yeah. Like not other, sh- there's not very many shows. It's basically like once, only it's more, mm. ex- it's more extreme. Yeah. Like there's not very many shows that ask the cast to move things in a particular way onto this size, you know, like a tiny little mark on that beat of the music and then yeah. go off and Mental. swish a cloak and go, you know, it's, it's the quality of the work rather than yeah. the quantity. Of yeah. Things. And is there, is there quite... Co- have the waving of the wands been choreographed? Every single, <gasps> every there's, beat. There's very, very it's very few things a dance show, see. yeah. Really, yeah. I would say, yeah. It's it's but a it lot of like dance. One of a, a kind too, but like once as well, where like you don't usually go and see like one half of a, a production and then have to come and back, then come back and see and the rest of it, and see the rest of it. So it's yeah. the only one in the world. That's London's too part, the only yeah. one left. Yeah, and they don't yeah. do that in Broadway, do they? they it's a one originally, and now it's show. one part. Yeah, and it's one part in Tokyo, and it's one part in Hamburg. Okay, wow. Well, the only shorter two show. Well. Yes, okay. it's still a lengthy production. Like it, yeah. I went to see it in Broadway when I was over last year with an, with Good Vibrations, and that on my day off, of course, I decided to of course go you see do. Harry Potter. So and committed to your absolutely <laughs> committed to my art. Um, but it was in a way it was sort of research for me because I wanted to see you know what the one parter was like. Um, but it was still three art. You know, it's still a long production, but it means that the cast are doing that show and then more traditionally then they'll just repeat the same thing then in the evening um but it's still yeah it's still a long tough yeah. show for them i think the number of show watches you must have had to do in your career oh, oh she loved how, it she was like the queen mother cope? in her box because i know i know with the shows that i'm involved in which let's be honest i don't have to do show watches for a week I, by the end of that week, I'm done. I'm like, I'm glad I don't need to see that again. Yeah, it's a definitely a particular type of thing. Yeah, good on sure. you. I think like you have to. Sometimes you have to say, I need to have a day off. Yeah, because yeah. You would, lose, you would lose perspective. Or are you looking for particular things within a show watch, or is it the the sometimes, whole picture? Yeah, sometimes you are. Sometimes you're really looking for the pace of something. Or um, sometimes you're looking at one particular person yeah, uh, to see how they're getting on with a particular movement or they're just their track in general. Do they need a little bit of help, extra help with things? Um, and yeah, so you tend to be able to see, if you, 
if you lose perspective and you're getting angry mm. or you're bored or something, then you know it's time just to the, step back yeah. just for a day or two yeah. and then go back into it again. But yeah. yeah, it's definitely a particular skill to sit and watch something week after week after yeah, week. Yeah, it's a lot like. Yeah. Um, so Ali, you've kind of, over the last number of years, kind of moved into TV work yeah. and film work. Lucky me. Yeah. Um, yes, I've just finished doing uh, a TV drama for Channel 5 called Ellis, which has um, the wonderful Sharon D. Clark oh, as Ellis. Her. Do you know, I went to see a youth project of um, Ghost uh, the other Wasn't night. She great and I just that? was like, oh, I remember seeing this. And I remember seeing Sharon, Sharon D. Clark as... Oda May, it was not. Odie yeah. May, yeah. She was um, she's unbelievable. She is unbelievable. I mean, she's got a voice like chocolate, mm-hmm. hasn't she? Um, so playing uh, Assistant Chief Constable Layton, her boss, which was and what was great is that I've known Sharon for thirty odd years and when I found out she was playing Ellis, it was just Happy both day. of us squealed. Yeah. Um and then I've done a little malpractice and tell a lie, I was a nun up a lighthouse. In the middle of the yeah, Irish Sea. See, see, I yeah. thought my nun days were over. Away from that Sister, Sizzi, Sister Sissy? Sister yes. Sissy. Sister Sissy. In a little American <laughs> short drama called There, There. Yeah, and there were no sequins on that habit. It was Oh my God, stern. it was pretty frightening. <laughs> oh, um, had a to get a boat over yeah. um, to the lighthouse in Greencastle. I was filming up there for about an hour and a half and came back again. Um, bizarre. The hours are long though, aren't they? Um, for, for, yeah, you're there all day. If yeah. you're, you're in the chair, it's what they call it for ma- hair and makeup at 7am. Yeah. And then you might not get on set till four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So you're like, so, uh, by then your brain's gone. A lot of hanging fried. around. Well, that's Some it. Like around, to do you know, all that hanging you're around and then after, so. have to turn it on now. Yeah. yeah that's the hard thing about it. It's the concentration. That's for the money. That's, you know, that's what you get yeah. the money for is being able to just go, boom, right, we're in. Yeah, and yeah. we're in, we're done. And you mentioned earlier in the, the uh, pod uh, that you were in the live, isn't it? They call them the live action mm-hmm. remakes of Beauty and the Beast. Yes. What did yeah. you do in that? Little I was a um, little head washer woman. Uh, uh, Features on Sombol, uh, which was 20 of us. It was one yeah. of the best summers of my life, really. I'm sure it was. I mean, we're all dressed in sort of 17th century clothes in a tent in the middle of Shepparton. Uh-huh. Um, and the actual set of Villeneuve mm-hmm. um you thought, like, so should we go to France today and go and eat our lunch in France, which yeah. is the set. And again, working with all those people was a pinch me moment, especially yeah. um, uh, Emma Watson and Emma Thompson and um, what's his name? Did you Ian see McKellen. lovely? Ian McKellen. Oh. And all of them were just, just Gad and, you yeah. know, it's just lovely. Very good. Just lovely. And then you did Mamma Mia too, didn't you, with your lovely fur coat? My lovely and fur coat. And your big, I loved your hair and that. Your I looked just like my mother, exactly like my mother. Oh, wow. My mother's hair was like that. Um, and that was with the lovely Maz Murray. Lovely. Um, who uh, we just giggled the whole way through, sat next to each other. Yeah. It was the worst combination you could put sitting next to each <laughs> other, really. Still. And did Anthony Von last so This is what I want to say about that. Anthony, is that um, if you work hard for him, he will reward you in later oh. years. So I did Sister Act for him yeah. and the tour for him. And then I'd never done a movie. And yeah. I thought, oh, I'm never going to get a movie, let alone a Disney one. Um, 15 years later, he said, do you want to be, you want to come and audition for Beauty and the Beast? And he gave it to me. And then for Mamma Mia, he just, do you want to do this scene, Waterloo? Um, I just missed going to Croatia to film the rest of it because I was doing Sister Act in Dublin. Oh. The extra week in, in Dublin yeah. scuppered me, really. Um, do you want to be in it? Well, do, do I have to do No, just come up, come and get fitted. You, you're in that scene. That's right. class, And that's how he's, that? he, he's very good to his to his friends. Yeah. He really is. But you know what? I think that's that's the truth of it. See if you find someone that you enjoy working with. They're good at what they do. And they're really easy to get on with. Yeah. You want to work with them again. And that happens repeatedly throughout your career. Yeah. Honestly. And he got all his sort of older friends that he trained with. Yeah. Who were, weren't, were still dancing, but they weren't in the business. And he got all them in the movie as Isn't well. Isn't that fantastic? All his older though. friends, you know, that were in their 60s, 70s, who probably hadn't done, you know, anything for years. But on set, that must have been so much fun then. Oh God, we all got on like a house on Yeah. Fire. How lovely. You know, we just had a big tally in the corner in a, in a marquee in the middle of Shepparton. Um, watching the tennis. Brilliant. When you weren't Brilliant. working. When we weren't working. I mean, yeah. you, were in the, yes. <laughs> you were in the chair at 6am, so yeah. it was a long day and you didn't finish till six o'clock at night. Yeah. So you'd either have a little nap or 
just watch the tennis. We nan a nap. And you've done a bit of TV as well, haven't you, Jen? Yeah, yeah, I have. So what have you been at? But I did um, series two and three of Dairy Girls. I mean, imagine Um, working on Dairy Girls. So I did that. Spice Girls one, Spice Girls one ones, and we did Rock the Boat. The boat where you, yeah. Oh, oh my the, gosh, yeah. that's hysterical, that one. Wedding thing. Yeah, and then um, Orla going round. Oh, the very last. With the Irish dancing oh, and all of Brilliant. that stuff. Yeah, so it was really good fun. Really and good then fun. World on Fire as well. World on Fire, which... Which I you was lucky enough to help you out with. I bet yeah. you still haven't put that invoice in either, have you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Make him put his invoices <laughs> in, please. There's <laughs> two. There's two yeah. he's got to do. Um, so Timmy got roped into that as well. It was really interesting. We had some McMaster students. Yeah, that's right, TV yeah. Experience. It was That was the first time I'd been involved in TV, and it was just really interesting Quite to see. Interesting experience. Isn't it? Mm. And how do you find, like... What are the challenges or the the enjoyable things about choreographing for TV compared to stage work? Like, what are there limitations? Are there things you have to think more about? Are there um, difficulties? Or it is really, really different. Like, they really feel like two different jobs. Yeah. Entirely. Um, and I would say that there you need a lot more flexibility in TV if you're going to work in TV because things change. Like greatly like you know yourself if you're creating something for theatre you're working for four four or five weeks or whatever it happens to be and you've kind of got it and then of course you do have to make some tweaks when you go into tech and whatever yeah. but generally that's it I and mean, once it's up and running it goes and it does its own thing uh, for TV you know honestly I think I could, you could do three or four hours rehearsals on something and then when you get to set it could be you'd have to change it yeah like and yeah. you have to change everything you might instantaneously to, like absolutely yeah and what you're having to do is like come up to an actor who's probably never danced in their lives and just say look everything's gonna be fine just like re- reassure them and say we're gonna do something a bit similar but you can you do this and this and this and like there was times whenever i was when we went up to do um orla's bit on the on the walls with the Irish dancers I was behind the guy with the go, you know, the mm-hmm. GoPro, the moving camera. Yeah. And I was screaming at the top of my, not in a horrible way, but like screaming five, six, seven, eight, you know, and you sort of have to have that confidence to do that. And it shifted for me. I, I was a little bit finding my feet in series one. Yeah. Or sorry, series two. And then when I got to series three, I thought, you know what? I have to take control of this. I have to step forward and just do what I need to do regardless of what anyone else is doing and I did that and I became more confident and I'm doing the next thing that I'm doing a little tiny bit of um the next program that they're doing very good how to get to heaven yes from Belfast Belfast. nice very good tiny little bit in that so so the two of you are still very busy then Chocolate. Can't grumble to me. Yeah, that's the way you want it, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, but we've had a nice wee time off as well, which is great. Yeah. Well, our podcast is all about, you know, what we what we learn from the various musicals we've seen or been involved in. So what, is there any overriding things that you've learned from the careers you've had or the things that you've done? Ali? I would say... Um, Work hard. Mm-hmm. Always be nice to the people you work with. Always hang your costume up. Good Otherwise girl. you get the wrath of me coming into the dressing Love room. Um, and it's all about being given the chance. And when you get given that chance, grab it with both hands and make the most of it. Yeah. It's funny. Always hang your costume okay. up. What two ladies always said that. Like our mothers. Our mums were exactly yes. the same because in the things they were the involved iceberg, in. It's about respect. And, you know, you, yeah. wardrobe people and the people that work in, you know, on the, that make you look good are, in, you know, that's all they, they care about is make, how you look when you go out on that stage. Yeah. Are far more important than you are, mm-hmm. you know, so be bloody nice to them. That's the other thing I like to kick people up on the backside with nowadays is they think that you know, they're the most important people oh, no. because they're the ones on stage doing it. And it's like, eh, eh. No, no. all these people who are working behind the scenes, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing exactly. if they were not there doing their And it's like work. being on a, on a TV or a film set. They're not interested in you. No. The sound people just want to know that they can, you know, what you're saying is heard. They, yeah. You could be singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star for all, yeah. for all they care. Yeah. 
you know, and, and wigs and makeup and costume are going, right, is that, is that the right? I don't care what you're doing. Yeah. You know, so forget it. Forget it if you think you are the bee's knees. No. That's it. And, Jen, what about you? Have it's you... okay to think you're the bee's knees now and again, isn't it? Well, with your pointy choreographer thing. <laughs> <you're just> doing, <laughs> yeah. she, I always really said it all, but I think the crux of it is, I think, just to get on in this business like in all other uh, work environments, it's just about how you are with people. Respect, yes. Respect. Um, but I suppose maybe even some, going back to what Lauren was saying about how you communicate with young people, I think anything's possible, really. Um, mm. And, if, you know, if, if either of us sort of thought back uh, to whenever we were youngsters starting out and just doing something as a hobby... Um, no, I wouldn't have thought this. We wouldn't have years. thought that we would <laughs> be doing not. what we're doing now and making a living out of it. And with the people that we've met, um, the places that we've been, even lifelong past, friends, yeah, we've lifelong met, friends, yeah, absolutely. And the community, once you're in the community and you're part of it, it's amazing. Um, so I would just say, in that way, if you do have that, some if, if anyone who's listening has that kind of feeling yeah. in them, that sort of burning desire, I think just go for it. Um, something will tell you that you that you can succeed. I think. Yeah. But the thing with you two, the reason you two have been so successful is you are both gloriously warm people. Mm. You're really hardworking and you're good at what you do. Oh, thank so you. So that's why you guys have had what you've had. Don't cry. Jen, you don't cry. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, what do you enjoy most about what you do, though? Um, why do you do it? Why do I do it? I love the meeting. glory. The, the glory. <laughs> the glory. The, the standing ovations, <laughs> darling. <laughs> I think I could possibly turn my hand to anything, but this is the thing that I'm best at and the thing that I enjoy the most. And the fact that it's taken me all over the world and all mm. over the country mm. and the beautiful friends that I've made out of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, the pay, paychecks sometimes have been fantastic. Yeah. And sometimes they've not. Mm. I mean, for example, a day's work on a TV is a month's wage in the theatre. Yeah, that's the difference. The paycheck between that is that needs really needs to be readdressed. Yeah, I don't doubt it will be. But yes, definitely the people that I've met, Mm. um, and there isn't a day if I'm working on a show or whether it be TV or film that I do not learn something new. You always can learn something new. And as Ian McKellen once said, all Shakespeare, all the world's a stage. Watch people, see how they walk, see how they talk. There's a character out there everywhere you look that mm. you could take something from and put in a performance at some stage. Yeah. Yeah. Jen? What was the question again? The question was, <laughs> what do you love most about what you what do? What do you love most about it? Ta- bossing um, people about. The finger, people, wiggling that wiggling finger. Wiggling the choreographic finger. I don't think I've ever been, that. I've never had that That's finger wiggled. generally beside me. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> True, can but you can still you wiggle it. If... <laughs> um, I think for this particular job, it's the variety. It's a mm. variety of work. So uh, yesterday I was working, doing a little rehearsal for the TV show. Uh, next week I'm starting rehearsals for an opera, and then I'm going yeah. off to do uh, the operas with Northern Ireland Opera Eugene O'Negan, and then I'm going off to do Harry. I think it's sort of just a variety, um, and I suppose in a way I've earned it. I've heard yeah. that variety because that's all I've ever, you know, I've just done so many different things over the years. Um, yeah, I'm working with amazing people. Like, yeah. honest to goodness. No, you know, everywhere I go, I'll meet someone that I've taught <laughs> and they'll be like, Jen, what's the crack? And, yeah. you know, and uh, the, so having, feeling like you've had an impact on people's lives, even if it's only been in a small way, that's really, yeah. I sense, there's a sense of achievement comes with that. Um, and then, of course, on opening night when you go, phew, that looks all right. Okay, it's open and it's not a disaster. We're okay. No yeah, one does. Exactly. <laughs> the curtain's up and nobody dies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we are also quite good on this podcast at a- embarrassing ourselves, like with, you know, funny or silly mishaps that have happened. Oh, are there not, any no, clank? No, you don't, me. obviously, Jen. You're, yeah. p- you're perfection. But Ali, have you had any like funny on stage mishaps or apart from not being in the right place? Apart from <laughs> apart from <laughs> into not. the woods, like is there any oh, clangers okay. that you still have and go, Oh my goodness, I will never I Did will take that to, on to my grave. Um See, No, I've never forgotten to come but come on stage. Are you sure? Absolutely sure, but I was just thinking about this the other day, uh, today actually, uh, Ray Campbell Hill, who 
who you, you, you both know. Yeah. I first met him on um, Alice the Musical. Yeah. And you put your mic on when you're getting your costume on. And we to, at the start of the show, we had to hide behind this thing. So once you're behind this sort of bookcase, he was dressed as a schoolboy and I was the, the, the school mistress. Mistress and um, well. You're stuck there. You can't get off. You can't get on because you're stuck there. And he just looked at me and went, oh, my God. I went, what, 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 what? He said, I put my mic on. <gasps> and I went, oh, you idiot. Oh, no. I went, oh, well. I said, well, you got time. I said, you're just, you know, we'll just put it on when you come off of this scene. So uh, we get through it and blah, 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 blah. And I'm laughing at him going, oh, rookie mistake, rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Anyway, <laughs> a couple of days later, we're standing behind the thing. And I look at him and I go, <gasps> <laughs> and I'd forgotten to put my mic on. <laughs> And he just looked at me and went, touche. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the other big thing was doing cabaret with my friend Pixie again. Uh-huh. Pixie was the MC and I was Sally Bowles. And uh, it was an, an acting musician version of it. And we're coming down and going, feel calm. He's on the accordion. And at the ending in cabaret or cabaret to cabaret. And he goes down on his knee and we're all behind him. And he just falls off the front of the stage oh. of the Windsor. Theatre. Oh, no. How did you keep your fist? And I almost go with him. <laughs> and he's gone. And he just stands up and goes, ha, huh! like this. <laughs> and then we have to go off stage, like, playing the train journey. Because mm-hmm. it's the train journey scene after that. Yeah. Playing um, on the sax. Do, 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 do. <laughs> well, it all came out as. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were wet yourself. Because I'm laughing. <laughs> And then I meet him again at the drum kit going, and I'm going, are you all right? And he goes, yes. Are you sure? Oh, yes. In time with the beat. And I was like, I will never forget that as long as I live. Never forget that as long oh. as I live. I mean, the shock of him falling off the front oh, of the stage. That's horrendous. I mean, it wasn't a great height because he's got long legs. And that was the reason why he fell off because he's got yeah, such long legs. Yeah, he overstepped it. Well, he got mm. overexcited and was showing yeah. off. That's <laughs> So those were, I say, the two biggest mishaps. Recent was the head mic with Ray. Yeah. And my own fault for being so smug yeah, about it. Well, oh, Ali. And then forgetting. Let's see, it happens professionals too. Happens so. to the best of them, <laughs> right? Okay, that we've got many I know. <laughs> but then again, doing, you know, like a, a, a play without a mic, I'm forever going, where's my mic? Mm-hmm. When you're not wearing one, it's really um, for little women. Yes. We didn't have mics, obviously. Yeah. And I was like, where's, you know, and panic. Yeah. Yeah. About to go on and go, shit, I haven't got my mic. It's no mic. You don't need one. No mic. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you've forever got a mic pack, a very uncomfortable around your middle, isn't it? Yeah. It's around your not waist. Great. It's not great. Um, so what's next for you all? You, you're obviously doing your, your onces and your doing various no different. I'm doing opera. You're well. doing NI opera. So where's that going to be? That's in the Opera House in Belfast. In September. In September. Yeah. And then when you come back from Taiwan, isn't it? No. Taiwan, Taichung. Yeah. I will be doing Richard III at the Lyric. Yeah. We um, may get our tickets for both of them. You may. I should, well, I'll see what I can do. Um, I'm playing the Duchess of York or Fergie, as I've called her. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> or Yorkie. Are you channeling the, the channeling, Fergie? Well, who knows? I'm you not never sure know. what style it's going to be in, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. We'll have to come and see to find out. Um, obviously... The Witch was a part that you'd always wanted to play. In the near future, is there anything for both of the, you that you kind of go, if that came up, I'd jump at that? Is there a part or a show or something in the arty world out there that you're going, that's a bit of me, I'd love to do that? Um, well, I seem to be following in Meryl Streep's shoes at the moment by playing The that's Witch right. and then... Um, uh, Aunt Josephine and Little Women. Yes. So I love that play where she's the opera singer and cannot sing. <gasps> oh, Mrs. Yes. Jenkins. I would yes. love to do that. Oh, you would be a sketch. Um, failing that, I would love to do um, Follies. Is that a musical? Not Follies, that Mrs. Jenkins? Well, she's the out of tunes opera singer, isn't she? But it's not a musical. Yeah. It's not but a it, musical. it so could it be. It so could be. And you'd be brilliant. I would love to play that role. Yeah. Just giving someone leave somewhere that idea. But and then a Follies. on our podcast all the time. Yeah. You mention something. See, we <laughs> say it and it happens. Somebody, <laughs> the producer goes, so no that acting required. Really yeah. <laughs> we will do that and not give musical lyrical angle any credit. I swear producers are listening in. Honestly. The, the number... Concert. 
something rotten's coming to London. We said that needed to come. Oh Two weeks God. later, it was announced. Wow. So it's what, yeah, really next scary. Is the next well, we've just next said, no, Mrs. Alvin Jenkins Murray. present. Is, no, Mrs. Jenkins no. Uh, something, some. Oh, it's a brilliant yeah. film. Or Follies. I would love to do, have a go at yeah. Follies. You know. That would be really special. But there we are. We'll see. I just always am looking for the next new musical. You want a big tits and teeth musical oh, next, yeah, don't and you? Oh, yeah, I also really want, because I've been doing movement direction for such a long time. Yeah. I would love to do, um, yeah, I'd love to do, like, quite a dancey, like, in the more traditional way. Um, All out, like a chorus line or something? Yeah, something, um, yeah. 42nd something Street. Really dancing. Or, yeah. Because I haven't done that for years. Yeah. I'd really like to put in a few kickball changes, you know. I, Absolutely. Yeah. Bit of cheese. A wee bit of cheese. Very I good. <laughs> Listen, we can't thank the both of you enough yeah. for being so gracious with your time today. I knew Thanks it would be us. good and thank it's been fabulous. Us. Anytime, you're welcome back. In your new studio. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. No, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, um, you. If people out there want to follow you along, follow you can me. obviously check out your Wikipedia page, <laughs> Ali. By my Russian. But, but, my <laughs> Russian fan. but where else might we find you? Uh, well, I'm on Insta as uh, at Harding49 and Twitter, X, whatever you call it now, yeah. um, at Kick the Habit 7. Oh, is that a wee kickback to your sister? Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> Kick the Habit, very good. And Jen? I'm on Instagram. I'm not very exciting, but I do try um, to put <laughs> stuff on about shows and things that I'm doing. Um, it's mainly food. <laughs> but I do. Uh, J, J Rooney Dance, I think I am. Yeah. yeah. J Rooney yeah. Dance. Yeah, yeah. Well, go and find them. Um, again, thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you pleasure. for having us. We'll be on the, the famous the pod, <laughs> the pod. We kind of, when we talk to people like you that have done so much, we kind of go, oh, maybe we are like professional podcasters these days. You are. You, you are. Know. Listen, until next time. Bye. Bye.